I tested over 30 bottles using these wireless thermometers, and here's the chart showing the rankings. The higher the bottle is on this list, the better insulation it has. Now I use YouTube like you guys, and I always hate having to watch a bunch of stuff that I'm not interested in to get to the real point. So I thought I'd try this reverse format to give you the usable info up front, and if that's all you're here for, hopefully this saves you some time. But the thing is, I'm not sure if this strategy will kill the video on the YouTube algorithm if it ends up being mostly short view times. So if you like this format, give the video a like and comment below to let me know what you think or how we could do it differently. Or keep watching if you'd like to see the main takeaways and how I did the tests. And to really help us out, use one of those links in the description if you're going to buy a bottle anyways, because we earn a small commission at no extra cost to you. And if the video does well, I'll use this format again in the future. This is Bottle Pro, and I promote health through hydration by helping you find the best bottles and by learning about hydration in general. If you're new to the channel, welcome. After pouring through the data, I came away with five main conclusions. Number one, the easiest way to guess a bottle's insulation that's also fairly reliable is the mouth diameter. A good rule of thumb is that the wider the opening, the worse the insulation. That makes sense because most heat is lost through the lid, as you can clearly see in this thermal imaging. However, the top three bottles were way better than any of the others. So why is that? Well, that leads into the second conclusion. While the mouth diameter is the most common factor and the one that's easiest to check, the lid design, and specifically if it makes a dual seal, is the most important factor. First, a quick correction. I said in a previous video that the lid design is not that important, but now I think that's completely wrong. Each of the top three bottles creates your typical seal at the top that you see in every single bottle on this list, but they also make a second seal on average about an inch or two down the neck of the bottle. With Swell's lid, this seal presses up against this part of the neck that narrows a bit more. Stanley's Classic Thermos works similarly, and Revomax has a threadless lid design that expands in the neck of the bottle. With each of these, the dual seal traps some heat and acts like an extra insulator. The next best bottle is Hydra Flask's Standard Mouth, which uses what they call their honeycomb insulation. That's why their lids have this larger section on the bottom. And I don't know for sure, but based on the name, I wouldn't be surprised if it's a honeycomb of plastic openings that keeps a consistent pocket of air within the lid. This helps the insulation in a similar way as the top three, but because it's not a true dual seal, some air can seep between the honeycomb insulation and the threads. So that's why it's not as good. Healthy Human, Simple Modern, and Vest Moon all have these thicker lids that look like they have something similar to Hydra Flask's honeycomb. So in general, they ranked pretty high as well. Yeti creates a dual seal, but the inside of the lid is open, so heat can just transfer through the top part of the lid. The biggest exception I see to this rule is with Takea. Their Takea Actives bottles come with an insulated lid, but it really didn't help that much compared to their original one. All of the other bottles on this list just have thinner plastic lids, and they don't create any kind of heat or air pocket in the lid. So the heat and the energy just transfers through a thin layer of plastic, and then once it's on the outside, it quickly mixes with the air around the bottle. So bottom line, and this is not a guarantee in all cases, but if you look at a bottle and see it's designed to create a dual seal within the lid, then odds are it will have good insulation. The third conclusion is for people who love those big tumblers with side mounted handles. If that's your preferred bottle style and better insulation is your top priority, then take a serious look at Simple Modern because they were way better than all all the other similar tumblers on this list. To see it more easily, here's the breakdown if you group the bottles by different volumes. And now it's really clear just how better Simple Modern was. On a side note, from a practical standpoint, this test is biased against bigger bottles. For the test, each bottle held 16 ounces of hot water because I was curious from a scientific standpoint what the results would be if they all started with the same amount of energy. But from a practical standpoint, you'll fill these bottles and tumblers up to the top, and that will just add more energy to the system, and if I had done the test that way, then it surely would have made the big bottles look better because they would have had more energy overall. Now the good news is I'm going to do a big ice water test with all of these bottles this summer, and for that one, each bottle will be filled to the top. The fourth conclusion is that branding and marketing really don't matter. Brands like Owala and Stanley always say they have amazing insulation, and Stanley in particular got a lot of viral attention a few years ago when a car caught on fire but the Stanley inside survived and still had ice. But that doesn't mean they have better insulation than any of these other brands. And in fact, they have consistently tested worse. Ozark Trail costs about $12, but it has better insulation than either Stanley or Owala. And the fifth conclusion is that it doesn't really look like triple layer insulation helps that much. Yes, a lot of the bottles at the top of this list have triple layer 
your insulation, but it's very possible that they place so well because of other factors like the mouth diameter and lid design. Just looking at Owala as an example, it has triple layer insulation, but it tested really poorly. So in general, triple layer insulation may help a little bit, but in my opinion, you should consider it more like a marketing term that doesn't really matter and don't let it affect your buying decision. One other data point that I'd like to call out is that Steepware did a lot better in this test than in previous ones, and I'm not sure why. It's possible I had a problem before with how Steepware was sealing, but regardless, I think this new data set is more reliable. So I'm sticking with this method moving forward. Let's look at the tests. I did these with hot water. Now, some bottles like Owala say they're not meant to be used with hot drinks, but from what I've read, it sounds like that's primarily a safety concern because they want to prevent situations where pressure may build and someone could get burned. Insulation works similarly for both hot and cold, so these hot tests should still give you a good relative ranking that you can use to compare these bottles even if you're planning to buy one for ice water. Having said that, I am planning to do a big cold water test this summer, so we'll see how that compares. To standardize the test, I bought this set of wireless thermometers, and it's the kind that are primarily used for smoking meats and grilling, but it worked well for this purpose too. It comes with these two sensor probes that are individually labeled on top, and they connect wirelessly to this display. I was not sure how waterproof the sensors were, so I made a little float for each one so only the bottom part of the probe would be underwater. I tested two bottles at a time by putting two measuring cups of 16 ounces of water into the microwave to heat up, and then I poured the water into the bottles, dropped the probes in, and closed the lids. I took a time-lapse video of the display and a timer, and then when the test was done, I waited at least half a day for the bottle temperatures to equalize, and then I repeated the test after switching which probe went into which bottle. Then I checked the videos to record the times, and after averaging the results, I came up with this table. I ran into a problem with the Swell Bottle and Stanley's Thermos because something about those two kept the display and the probes from connecting reliably. So instead, I tested those the old-fashioned way using a candy thermometer. To make sure the results would be comparable, I tested all the thermometers first and they were pretty much the same. Then for the Swell and Stanley Thermos, I heated up the water and waited until it was right around 165 degrees Fahrenheit, then I closed the lid. At first, I just guessed how long it would take the temperature to drop to 150 and then I took a measurement. Then I adjusted my guess and repeated it again and again over several iterations. I did it this way because I didn't want there to be an error from removing the lid and checking the water temperature multiple times within a single test. Overall, in my opinion, most vacuum insulated bottles will be good enough for most people most days. So sometimes it's better to focus on other factors like the lid, color options, and handle design to get something that you like. Here's a full comparison video about most of these bottles if you'd like to learn more about them. Hope this helps and happy hydrating.